So number one has a figure G prime, and that's the image of this smaller figure G with a dilation by a scale factor of two, so it's doubling in size. Where is the center of rotation? So remember for center of rotation, you should be able to connect the original to the image on a line that connects to the center. So if we just kind of start at our image, we go back to our original and we just keep extending, that will help us find um, the center of dilation, which in this case is point B. And if you looked like you could keep extending that, so that's going through this original to this image and here to here. So every kind of all of those points are coming out of B. So B is the center of dilation. Number two wants us to actually dilate quadrilateral ABCD. So this orange one here using a scale factor of one half. So our shape is going to be getting smaller. So we're going to be using A as the center. So let me just get A highlighted on here. So here's A, and we're gonna be looking at how far it is from A to each point along a line and cutting that in half. So <clears throat> let me look here. So if we connect A to B, we see it's kind of two triangles long. So our new um, point B is gonna be cut in half, so to right here. So here's that chunk, we'll be there, let me, do this. So we're going to go A to B will be here. Then if we look at A to C, we see it's this far. And so we're going to cut that in half. So it's going to go to right here. So we're going to cut that in half. So here's where our new point C would be. And let me get this dilated line out of there or dilation line out of there. So then there's B to C, and then we can look, here's A to D. So we're gonna cut that in half, so the new point D will be here. And then we can just connect all of those. So we're just cutting them in half. So this was B prime, this is C prime, and this is D prime. Number three, this bigger triangle ABC is dilated to A prime, B prime, C prime. Let's find the value of X. <clears throat> so you can do quite a few things here. Um, you can figure out the scale factor from one to the next. So if I have um, two sides that are similar, so if I compare this side to this side, that will help me get the scale factor. And um, so the scale factor here that takes this one to this one, so you take the new divided by the original. So this is our scale factor. So our scale factor, and if you wanna simplify this, you can. So our scale factor is two thirds. So if we go from this shape here to this one, we multiply by two thirds. And so then when we take a look at, um, comparing the side that's similar to X. So if we take BC and we multiply that by two thirds, we should get our X. So that's going to be three um, times two thirds would give us X. And if you do three times two thirds, you'll get two. So that's going to be um, our value of X. That's one way to do it. Another way is to actually set up a proportion. Um, and I personally like to set up my proportions starting with the variable. So I'm going to take X, compare it to its similar side, which is that three. So X compared to three should equal, then I go back to the same figure that X was in. So that's going to be four compares with six. So just comparing some corresponding sides there. And then you can cross multiply. So you can do six times X and you can do three times four, and then divide by six, and you'd get two that way as well. So that's another way that you can do it. Um, and a third way that you could look at this one is, we see that in this 
triangle, six compared to three, that's just divided by two. So these are in kind of a scale of two, the, the legs are. And so that's going to happen in this one as well. So if I look at this four to get to X, it's got to do the same thing proportionally as this one did. So it's going to have to divide by two. So four divided by two would also give us two for X. So a lot of different ways to end up with the same answer. Number four, Q is a scaled copy of P. Let's um, find the value of Y given that we know that X is six. So they told us X is six. So again, um, different ways that you can complete this. You could find the scale factor here. So finding the K value, and remember that's by comparing a side in the new shape, okay, divided by its corresponding side in the original. So I compared this three with it with four. So the scale factor that takes P to Q is three fourths. So then we could take this six and we can multiply it by three fourths to get the corresponding side of Y. And so that's going to be 18 divided by 4, which is 9 halves. So that's C. can also set up a proportion. Um, <clears throat> and again, I like to set up my proportion starting with the variable that I'm solving for. So I'm going to do Y compared to 6, its corresponding side. Then I go back to the orange shape and I take 3 and compare it to its corresponding side of 4. And then you can cross multiply. So six times um, three is 18 divided by four. And you would get that nine halves that way as well. All right, number five just wants us to solve the proportion. So when our variable is on the top, um, you're just kind of multiplying by 20 and then dividing. So cross multiplying and dividing. So we get X equals 20 times two, which is 40, and then divided by five, which is eight. You can certainly like actually do cross multiplication where you do 20 um, times two, which is 40, and then you can do five times X, but then you're just gonna divide the five down anyways. So that five is just gonna get divided down anyway, so I just leave it there. So I do 20 times 2 divided by 5. Or in this next one, 10 times 2 divided by 3. So you're going to end up with 10 times 2, which is 20, and then just divide that by 3, which is 6.6 .6 repeating, so 6.67 .6 if you were rounding to two decimal places. Number 6 tells us that this shape is a kite. Um, and it tells us that angle W, X, Y, so W, X, Y, so this angle here is 94 degrees. And then it also tells us that angle Z, Y, X, so Z, Y, X, so this angle here is 60 degrees. And then it wants us to find the measure of angle Z, W, Y. So it wants us to find the measure of this angle here. Um, so multiple, multiple ways um, to, to attack this. Since you have this whole kite, you've got these little triangles. Um, so if you're looking at this kind of triangle here, so this one over here, we know that this is 30 because this diagonal of the kite is a line of symmetry. So it took this 60 and split it into two. So both of these angles are 30. What that does for us is gets us in this kind of bottom triangle. Now we know that this angle is 30. This one is 94. And we know the total of a triangle is 180. So we could take 180 and we could subtract 30 and we could subtract 94 and we would end up with 56 degrees here for this angle, which we then know um, is also the same as this blue angle here. Since these are corresponding when we reflect over that line of symmetry, 
So then that would be the measure of angle um, CWY that we're looking for. So that's one way that we can do that. Um, another way is to look at um, the whole kite itself. So maybe I'll just duplicate this um, screen so that we can just um, start over a little bit. So if we looked at it as a kite here, so if we looked at the kite as being um, a quadrilateral that totals 360 degrees. So we know this big angle here is 60. We know this one is 94. And so if this one is 94, so is this one because they would fold on each other. So they are equal to each other. So we could take 360 degrees and subtract off 94, subtract 94, and subtract 60, which would give us this big angle here of 112 degrees. So that's this whole angle. Then you could just divide that by two um, to get the 56 for each of these smaller angles. All right, then number seven, so seven asks us to describe transformations that would take that right hand flag, the green one there, um, over to the left hand flag. So if we were gonna type out some directions here, we it looks like we wanna rotate that right flag. Um, so let's say rotate um, the R flag. And you could do either um, direction here. I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller. Um, so you could do either direction. You could go all the way around this way, which would be um, counterclockwise, or you could go clockwise. So I'm going to say rotate the R flag around the shoulder um, 90 degrees clockwise. So if I do that, that's going to rotate my flag um, over to here. So now they're kind of lined up this way. Now the flags, um, now the flag part isn't, we've got the pole, uh, together but now we need to do a reflection so now reflect the r flag um over the um l flag and that would get us um the r to land directly on the l so if we just reflected it over the l flag um that would move this flag onto the l all 